half inch group there for three shots at 100. So really happy with that one. Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Steyr Scout stainless steel rifle in 223. Now this rifle also is available in 308, so you know depending on which calibre you want, I mean two of the most popular calibres you can get, let's be honest. You've got the choice there. I just thought I'd grab this one in 223 and uh, see how it goes. Now I've only really reviewed uh, in the uh, Steyr Centerfire range, I've reviewed the uh, 308, so I thought, well, look, let's go um, with this video review with 223 and just see how it performs. So I'll go ahead and clear it here, and we'll give you a run-by of it just so you can have a look up close here. Now, overall length on it is only 98 centimetres or 38.6 inches, so, you know, it's fairly compact in line with that Scout design. It's uh, three kilos or 6.6 .6 pounds in overall weight. So starting off at the uh, barrel here, as you can see, it's stainless, it's also fluted. Uh, with the 223, it's uh, a one and 12 inch twist. So the length of it is 19 inches or 48.5 centimeters. So, you know, it's obviously to keep it relatively lightweight, but uh, you know, it's not gonna be a barrel that you're gonna be wanting to put round after round through you know, because I imagine it's going to heat up reasonably quickly. We've also got a uh, front sight, an integral front sight, so you just pull down or forward on the tab there and that comes up. And pretty much the same towards the rear here, but I've got the actual optic mounted on the rear, so I can't show you that there. But uh, yeah, in line with the Scout design, we've got bits of uh, Weaver or Picatinny rail, um, you know, basically machined into the um, uh, upper part here of the stock so you can have that scout design where you've got that uh, scope or optic forward there on the top of the rail for me i really don't like the look of that um, i'm more of a traditionalist i guess um, so yeah that's why i've got the scope just mounted at the rear here so as for the scope um, look keeping with the lightweight theme it's the uh, loophole vx3 2.5 to 8 by 36 so you know it just keeps it nice and compact you know on the rifle now we've got a uh, integral bipod you know this is one of the things with these style rifles i guess that sets them apart from the others i don't know of too many that have got this design so you just push it on the button there and you know the legs fold out and just clip back in very very uh hardy like um yeah you pretty much uh, would have to do a lot of abuse to it to try to break it uh, very strong like the polymer of this whole stock is is tough in general now the uh detachable mag here is five rounds so um you know once again uh polymer nice and sturdy so i can't foresee any problems you know with them but uh, we'll certainly put it to the test in the review now the action on it Nice and smooth. I really like uh, the Steyr actions. Um, and it's like any European maker, really. Like, a lot of the time, their actions are well known for being super smooth. And the Steyr's, you know, no different. We've got a uh, decent size uh, bolt knob there. So, you know, you can easily get that in the palm of your hand and manipulate the action. Now, the one thing that's really different on these rifles is this um, SBS, or safe bolt system. Uh, from Steyr. So at the moment, obviously you can uh, you can fire, but there's three settings on it. Okay, so if we go to the next setting, no, oh, we've gone too far. Go down one there. Okay, so you can't fire, but you can cycle the action. Okay, then if you go all the way, okay, it locks the action, and naturally you can't fire. This is also where you need to have it on to be able to actually uh, remove the bolt. So you, it's a bit of a weird system, I find. So you go to the uh, next uh, one on the safety there, lift up the bolt, but you still can't, you still can't remove it. Okay, no matter if you pull the trigger or whatever you do, you've just got to leave it up, and then go down to the next uh, setting, which normally would lock the bolt. But if the bolt's up, you can just remove it the whole way. Okay. So that's how it works. It's a 
yeah, a bit of an unusual system. I don't know if I really like it, to be honest. I just prefer something a little bit more traditional there, I think. Now, the trigger pull on this uh, isn't too bad. Um, it's uh, nice and crisp, basically a two-stage trigger. Uh, you've got that take-up nice and light, and then it just breaks nice and crisp at about uh, three pounds. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, ample for out there hunting. We've also got a lot of sling attachments here. Um, so you've got the adapters that come with the rifle. I just don't have any spare uh, with me here at the moment, sorry guys. But basically uh, this here is where you can put the sling on. You can put one, the bottom here, you know, on the other side. There's heaps of areas where you can do it uh, all over the stock. Now uh, also too, I should mention, you can actually um, yeah, put some rounds in your spare mag that sits in the rear of the stock and obviously you've got that out hunting so you can do a quick change there and um, swap over the magazine you know if you've run out of shots in the um, mag that you're using so I think that's a pretty good feature I do actually like the idea of that at the rear here um, look I don't even know if we'd call it really a kick pad it's pretty hard uh, rubber at the back there but uh, it seems to work no dramas at all now, if you actually do want to upgrade it uh, to a 10 round magazine, there is an adapter and a 10 round uh, magazine available as an option. But, uh, you know, with this, I mean, look, it sits nice and flush. And um, I thought, well, you know, for a hunting rifle anyway, uh, you've got the five round mag here, you've got the other five round mag in the rear of the stock. Um, yeah, that seems fine to me. Now, obviously being Steyr, uh, made in Austria, and the current price here in Australia, guys, is, look, it varies, but about $3,500, so not cheap, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly not, but, um, you know, does it perform? Let's get out on the farm now, put a few rounds through it, and just see how it performs in general. All right, guys, so let's run you through the ammo we're gonna use through the Steyr. So we'll start off with the Federal Premium, loaded with the 52 grain spear hollow points. Then we'll try the OSA loaded with the 55 grain Sierra Game King. Uh, then the Hornady VMAX, which is a 55 grain uh, projectile. Then we've got uh, from Federal Premium, the Trophy Bonded Tip 62 grain uh, projectile. So we'll see how they go. And then just for a bit of fun, let's put some match ammo through the rifle. So we'll use the 69 grain match from RWS. So look, it's a pretty pencil thin <laughs> barrel, this one. So out there at 100 we've got the target and we're just going to do three shot groups and we'll just see which ammo takes a liking to the style. Yeah, I didn't think that actually picked up a round. There we go. Actually, we're skimming over the top. Okay, so we started off with the Federal Premium loaded with the 52 grain spear projectile. Unfortunately, we've had a fair bit of spread there, uh, about 1.7 inches. Then we come down to the OSA loaded with the 55 grain Game King. Big difference there, look at that. We're gonna have a nice half inch group there for three shots at 100. So really happy with that one. 
Then up to the uh, Hornady VMAX. Yeah, a little bit of spread there, unfortunately, and that's blown out to about 1.4 inches. Then we come up to Federal Premium with the 62 grain um, trophy bonded tip. A uh, little bit of spread there, but I think we'll be right on an inch. Then we come down to the RWS match. A little bit tighter there as you'd expect, uh, 0.8 of an inch. So I think honestly that uh, one flyer there could have been me guys with that uh, scope. But um, yeah, I think if you wanted to put some match ammo through it, yeah, the RWS is certainly uh, quite a performer. And as for hunting ammunition, well, look at that. The OSA loaded with the 55 grain Sierra Game King would be my choice there. So with the mag, it loads very easily. Obviously, just straight down through the top there. So you don't have to put it uh, in the front and then slide back. You can just push straight down from the top, which is handy. And sits nice and snug there. The only thing is there, as you guys saw, when I was using the uh, Federal 52 grain ammo, just didn't pick up that second round. Um, all the other groups are uh, fine, but yeah, we did have that uh, small hiccup. Malfunction with this damn magazine. <laughs> Try again. All right, we've got a different mag in now, the spare magazine, so we'll see how we go. Yeah, a lot better. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up my final thoughts on this Steyr Scout Stainless in 223. Uh, positives on it, um, look, <laughs> apart from the way it looks, uh, it's actually very practical and very uh, functional. You know, having that spare magazine in the rear of the stock is handy, you know, if you're out uh, hunting, because instead of fumbling around in a pocket and so forth, you can just grab the spare one from the uh, rear of the stock there. Uh, accuracy wise, look, you know, half inch for the three shots there using those OSA 55 grain Game Kings. I really can't ask much more than that out of a sporter, you know, lightweight barrel that uh, this is. Now, things I don't like about it, uh, the look, you know, I, I just, I find it really hard to like the look of uh, the Steyr rifles, you know. Um, I just do. The, the Scouts just look kind of a combination of futuristic plastic all sort of thrown into one if that makes sense um, but yeah do they shoot yeah they definitely do they work well however i've had a problem there with one of the magazines i've tried uh, a few more rounds through the spare mag it's fine so i dare say it might be just something to do with the spring tension there on the follower so look uh, apart from that i show you things exactly the way they are guys as you know and look that's an issue that i've had with the rifle so far probably the only issue to be honest the trigger is beautiful on it you know it's nice and smooth the action and as i say extremely practical so uh yeah i just think uh for the price though yeah, I'd be sort of weighing up, you know, whether you go like Seiko or save your money and just get a, a ticker, for example, that's going to shoot just as well. Um, but, you know, it, it is a different design, a different system altogether compared to the uh, to the Steyr. So uh, this is just, you know, a, a do-it-all sort of rifle all thrown into one. I mean, the bipod on it, it works, it's acceptable. Yeah, it feels a little bit sort of... <sighs> What's the word? Quirky, <laughs> I guess. Um, you know, compared to a nice Harris or Atlas, but uh, it is what it is. That is this particular design. So, yeah, overall, guys, not a bad rifle at all. So I hope you enjoyed watching the review. So till next time, we'll catch you then.